race or it's just running I, for I, running? No, I marathon. Okay. okay. When's the last marathon you did? <laughs> Field marathon, okay. uh, February. And that was which one? Train. Okay. And it was ugly. So what happened? Um, my, I've never just had dead legs, yeah. but, um, I had a hip issue and then my quads died. Okay. So I made it to like 13 on pace and didn't have it. So you didn't, didn't finish? I didn't finish it. Okay. I was hurting. All right. So. So what's next then? Uh, Huntsville. Okay. Um, December. So right now I'm just base work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Texas. So yeah. I'm not used to the hills. Okay. So I'm working on hills. All right. And what's base? Like how many miles a week right now? Uh, like 50 with a fallback week of 40 every okay. like two to three weeks. All right. And like, is that regimented in like workouts? Like, is there a tempo threshold? No, okay. Just base. Okay. Um, how long ago did you start doing this? After I recovered from February, from the February okay. race. So, so like, like March two to three months. Yeah. Did you do any like threshold work up front, like VO2 intervals or anything? Uh, I did that, you know, when I was training. Okay. I don't, yeah. Like right now, I'm just trying to enjoy running and okay. like it again. Yeah. I mean, I had like total burnout last yeah. time, which I've never. So had. how long did you actually take off off? I took two weeks off from running. Like okay. Off from anything. Okay. A good two weeks and then started biking and then like came back at one to two miles. And are you, what are you monitoring now? like heart rate, rate of perceived exertion, or? Yeah, I mean, really, I'm just trying to run comfortably. Okay, Yeah. cool. Um, just a good, comfortable. So you're not bumping into hitting thresholds? No. Gotcha. No, I don't want to right Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll be later. Injury-wise, have you ever had any big injuries? Like broken uh, bones, surgeries? No, 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 no. Okay, anything that's plaguing, like a um, chronic thing for running? <laughs> like soleus, Achilles, Okay. On always side. on that side? Always on that side. Does that, always, does that always show up at like higher mileage? Uh-huh. Okay. And, well, and really, I'll take a rest day and it'll feel better. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think the hills help. But, yeah. Um, and then if I don't do a lot of hip stuff, I do a lot of hip exercises mm -hmm. to keep yeah. that under control. Okay. But nothing major ever? Nothing no. that's really sidelining you? Doesn't sound like? No, not for more than a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, All right. But, Okay, cool. So what we're going to do first is go through like a whole like top tier movement assessments. So we're really trying to, for me, I'm almost trying to guess what I'm going to see on the treadmill before it happens, right? Like, okay. Also, if we saw you run, uh -huh. let's say something's just like crazy looking, then uh -huh. if we didn't look at how you move first, like we would uh -huh. be trying to coach you into something you can't do. And okay. that like would be really difficult and frustrating. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we'll go through all that stuff, get a perfect view. Like I said, we're going to run very short. We'll look at it. For you, I mean, you're a pretty seasoned runner, so we're looking for like big stuff, yeah. and we don't get nitpicky. I some of what you're gonna yeah. find. I hope we'll you see. tell me how to fix it. <laughs> well, and what we also wanna, and that's where we start with like movement first, uh -huh. right? Because if you've been running for a long time, movement's like a thumbprint, right? right. So the likelihood of us coaching that change is low. So we right. wanna say like, well, what are the other factors that are bleeding into like why you would do that? Right. Okay? So go feet together. Okay. So try to get your chin to touch your sternum without opening your mouth. Okay, look back at the ceiling as far back as you can. Awesome, looking over your right shoulder as far as you can. And then left. And do you wear glasses or contacts? Contacts. When you're running? Mm-hmm. Okay. How long have you had contacts? Gosh, <laughs> a really long time. <laughs> okay, like more than 10 years? Yes. <laughs> When's the last time your prescription changed? Or has it since uh, you've had them? It hasn't been a really long time, probably 10 years. And when's the last time you, I mean, obviously go to the optometrist to get the yes. prescription renewed. Yeah. So that's just stayed the same. Yes, stayed okay. the same. Okay. All right. So looking over that left shoulder as far as you can. Cool. And then head straight. Go left hand up to right shoulder blade as high as you possibly can. And then switch right hand up to left. Cool. Left hand over top hit right. Right over top hit left. Cool. Keeping your knees straight. Go down through a toe touch as far as you comfortably can. Perfect and then reverse that. So arms up overhead, bend back as far as you can, pushing your hips forward in space. <laughs> Not too bad. And then arms by your side, okay. rotate your whole body over your right side. Okay. Now we're gonna do that one more time, max okay. it out. Let everything twist as much as you possibly can. That's twisty. That's cool. twisty enough. And then switch. Cool, all right. So right foot's gonna stay down, left foot up off the ground, just looking straight ahead in space. 
and let those arms chill. So you're going 10 seconds if we can, eyes open, and then you're going to close and try to go another 10 seconds, eyes closed. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and close. And try to keep those arms chill. Okay, take a break. So switch. And we're in shoes. Sometimes we do a barefoot, but we're just getting a broad base view. Don't tag me in this video. <laughs> so let those arms chill, eyes open, looking straight ahead. And if you're feeling solid, go ahead and close. Okay, no worries. All right. So now go feet back together, keep your heels down, go down through a squat as far as you possibly can without your heels coming up off the ground. Perfect, awesome. All right, so now what I want you to do is like mock jump rope. So like just start two feet, which should be super easy, and I want you to think as many jumps as you can, so it's as quick as you could. Now go over to adjust your right leg. And then adjust your left. All right, so, okay. So we're gonna do a little endurance test before we actually have you run. So now your knee stays and you're just doing heel raises. Nice. Yep. And trying to keep that knee locked in as best you can. So 90% of running is like performed by your soleus, right? Especially if you're a marathon. Like yeah. yeah. So, well, what's probably getting hurt on you is your gastroc. Okay. Right. Because if you can't like, basically the reason the soleus works like that is think you're never in terminal knee extension, right? When you're running more or less sprinting and jumping is where you get that gastroc, that right. last 10%. So if you start to like get boggy with your soleus, which is why we watch those pogo jumps, mm -hmm. you use your gastroc for more like toe pop, right? So we'll okay. see somebody like really push off hard at the end and then they start getting like calf heart attacks or recurrent strains. Okay. So we want to like make sure that like it's really strong, but then the, the endurance is there. So right. typical endurance set reps would be like four sets of 25 or something. Point out something for the camera. So our heel kind of stays in a little, like it should go into an inverted position. Doesn't quite get there. A couple more. You're doing great. One, and you're done. You made me do more than 20. Yeah, I was watching. Um, <laughs> so that's good. Do they feel the same? something uh -huh. we want big fish to fry but like we really try not to coach stuff right so we're just going to play this at full speed first so you can just kind of watch and usually we would want to listen as well cool so one time at full speed so let's go back and let's capture like basically foot strike. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious, first of all, have you tried to coach yourself into a four foot strike? Yes, I have. <laughs> okay, so that's like the kiss of death for like calf injuries. Yeah. Right? But Be I honestly feel so much better in these with a four foot strike. No, and you will, but the kiss of death doesn't come from like what, what part of your foot lands. It's like where your foot lands in, in relation to your center of mass, uh -huh. which is absolutely just killing you. Okay. So how do I fix that? So this should be about five degrees max, okay. right? Especially as fast as you are and as much as you're running because so for- going in front of me. Yeah, so there's about three and a half times body weight every time you land, regardless okay. of how good your center of mass landing is. Uh -huh. The further you move it out, the more okay. weight you add to impact, right? Okay. And it's good that you're doing a bunch of calf strengthening stuff, so you're <laughs> offsetting. Contact time is important, and that's one of the reasons that you may be getting your left foot further out in front of you, is you're just stronger on that side, and every runner has a dominant side, yeah. that you're about 60-40, and that would be a normal ratio. 
I would say they're close the same. I mean, that's, okay. again, we're taking approximations, right. right? But that's right before impact. Like, where's okay. your foot going to hit before you start loading it? Because we could really easily just be like, oh my gosh, look how good your foot looks and like stop right. it wherever. Right. So what we want to also see is off of that, so when we're in terminal hip extension, we start going through, like that's maximal knee flexion for you, right on this side. This is where we get into like maybe why you're landing like this. Okay. So that's pretty good, right, okay. for a jog, like 65 yeah. degrees. And why that matters is like, are you actually using your hamstring right. to like pull to you pull forward it. or are you popping off your calf and right. like kind of getting too much vertical oscillation? Now, this is an angle. Where else do we have an angle that we may not want to see one? Shouldn't I be leaning forward more? From your ankle, not your hip. Yeah. So like that is called sitting into the seat. Okay. Right, this is where I think you're putting your foot out in front of you, your hip behind you, because uh -huh. of like a little bit of, I wouldn't call it weakness, I would call it like coordination. Okay. Right, so if for you it feels good to land like this, which means you have to use your calf, because you're literally using your hip to stabilize you rather than like drive okay. hard. You get 22 miles into a marathon, this is gonna be a big fatigue state, okay. right? And you've had some hip stuff, you've had some mm -hmm. calf stuff. There's two things that we look at with that knee flexion angle is, you know, can we, guess how much posterior chain you're using mm -hmm. the smaller this lever is the faster it moves right mm -hmm. so a long lever takes a long time to swing right. if i close this angle down i'm pulling harder but then i can get it back in front of me which would be like get your knee up right you've heard right. that coached well if you don't want to use your hamstring and you go knee up what are you doing you're just pushing harder with your quad and your calf to get mm -hmm. your knee higher mm -hmm. so you can turn into this like a sprinter that's a distance runner which is no bueno right, right. So some really good stuff here. The first thing that's really good is the maintenance of space, right? No crossover whatsoever. So your feet are landing absolutely directly under your hips. Okay. It's really good, right? Now remember how I said like a coordination thing. Uh -huh. So that doesn't mean like, so. and what, maybe coordination is a poor term. So don't think coordinated like I couldn't catch a ball. I think yeah. coordination of how do you create stability versus like do you create stiffness? Okay. And you literally set out here like I'm not a very twisty person. Yeah. I don't know if that's a mobility thing or if you're not twisty because that's how you find stability. So here's a big deal to me, probably bigger than the sitting in your hip. So if we watch your back, uh -huh. right, your upper back, there's like no rotation. Okay. So you kind of move your arms yeah. in a big wide circle. Okay. So when we do that, what you're trying to do is you're trying to create twists, and this is called the spinal engine theory, that you need to create twisting in your spine so you don't have to create it into the ground, okay. right? So you have a pretty wide base you're throwing your arms around you, there's a lot of wasted like energy, energy. instead of this way. What we want to see is that you actually do rotate, right? Okay. Your thoracic spine. So that's why when you're like, I'm not a twisty person, getting a little bit more motion and then letting you like chill, all of a sudden you can wind up each sling and literally that's how you go forward. It's like a drive shaft on a car. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Compensate with this stiffness for getting a bunch of rotation through your pelvis. You just do a lot of work down here. This is the other reason I think your foot goes way out in front of you okay. to make up a bunch of like, um, basically the guy who came up with the spinal engine theory said, well, if I can't create torque into the ground, which we really don't when we run, I have to create it up here. You're the opposite. You create it into the ground. That's why you're so wide. So it's almost like, have you ever seen somebody take off out of the starting blocks uh -huh. sprinting? What do they do? Uh -huh. It's like a wide side push until right. they get going. It's almost like you're creating this like sideways displacement to just like keep yourself going. And you're a really good runner, so forearms down, mm -hmm. and then hand on your low back, uh -huh. rotate as high as you can. So, perfect. Yeah. Okay. And then switch sides. Now, when you're doing this, make mm -hmm. sure you're not leaning. Okay. So pure, yeah. Okay. Still really good. Okay, now go on your back for me. So your theory of I'm not a twisty person may be false. <laughs> okay. Then, so yeah. So you have tons of mobility. Um, you Outward. Outward, but your external is not horrible either. And that's just kind of a function of structure, right? That's mm -hmm. 60 degrees is about normal. Okay. So it's still normal. You do have more, which yeah, is an aversion. Yeah. Guess what this is advantageous to? Running. Okay. Because you can create more torque into the ground. Okay. See, somebody else told me I was a mess because I could go way out. No, but what we got to make sure is can you control, control all of that right. and that may not be like a hip strengthening thing okay well that would be good to know because i'm doing all the hip things to try to and sometimes like we think of like strengthening stuff as like well the strategy has to be there first because like if i have a poor strategy and i keep like strengthening it i get yeah. better at the bad strategy right does that make sense so we're going to play around with breathing real quick and just see what happens okay, okay. so now push your abdomen back out into your fingers 
So, yes. Okay. So it's not show me your six pack, right? It's like show right. me how much you ate for Thanksgiving dinner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now keeping the pressure on, can you breathe just like you were breathing? So even when you exhale, the pressure doesn't go away. And it's kind of tough, but you're doing awesome. Yeah. And make them like normal breaths as best you can. I know it's tough when we're like, do this. Yeah. Stab yourself with your hands. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So do you do this when you run? No. no. But is there a modicum of this there, right? Enough pressure to keep you stable to where you don't have to stiffen, okay. right? Because there's no way that you should look as stiff as you do on the treadmill. Like yeah. no way. You should be like having a lot of rotation like a like a really good runner kind of creates torque to then go forward. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Diastasis. Yeah. Okay. So I'm smiling at the camera. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's where That's we're looking at breathing. Yeah. yeah. And where do you actually lean from? Your hip uh -huh. rather than like driving forward. So what are we starting to think? You may not have great anti-extension ability, right? Okay. Your ability to stop motion forward. Uh -huh. So you know, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit back into my hip. And then you get dead bugs. It is a dead bug in essence. <laughs> now what you have to think is right through here mm -hmm. is crushed to the table. Mm -hmm. So another way to think is my ribs come down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now breathe. <laughs>
seven weight hips or right. whatever we're doing. So now your brain's like, oh, I don't have to like keep them tight because like you have tons of mobility, but we would never know that watching you run. I right. would be like, man, she's, she is kind of stiff, like right. through rotation. So the rotation thing, I think we throw out. Okay. And we see once your foot gets under you, do you stop throwing your arms out around you? And I guarantee, okay. does that kind of make sense? Yeah. And the drills will be like, all the drills are predicated by, can you create pressure and can you breathe? As soon as you see that, like, you're like, I can't breathe, like, that's too high level. So okay. you have to, like, peel back the layers and then pretty soon you'll move fast because, like, a week or two of drills is all neurologic. And then your brain starts to learn, that's where strength comes in. Now you build strength and endurance on top of that new pattern. Pretty soon you're like, you may now start wanting to think about, it, especially in, like, speed work and stuff, when it's, you know, 800 mile repeats, whatever we're doing. Then you're like, hey, if I sit back into that, I'm cutting my hip range of motion off, like big time. Uh -huh. So if I'm doing a half marathon and I'm trying to get after yeah. it and I can only go this far because my hip's like, if you go any further, I can't control it. Uh -huh. Well, that's a big deal because it slows me down and I'm gonna use more of this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're kind of that person, last thing here, that we would say you kind of run with your calf, right? And we don't wanna say your butt's in your calf, but like yeah. there's a lot of force yeah. going this way. Yeah. And then, I mean, you want, I mean, there, it's different for everybody, but you want vertical oscillation, right? You're jumping from one leg to the other. Right. Yeah, I think big bang for our buck for going back. Like, how old is your youngest child? Uh, he's five. So going back four and a half years yeah. and doing, like, fourth trimester stuff, reorganizing that, and then pretty soon you're like, ooh, everything's easier, mm -hmm. right? I think okay. that would be awesome. Sound cool? Yeah. Right. Any questions on stuff I didn't pick out that you've had thoughts on or questions or? No, I mean, you touched on the, um, you know, I'm on my right leg longer, which I thought, you yeah. know, but that makes sense. And everybody is, right? Okay. When it becomes grossly asymmetric, right? Mm -hmm. Like we can hear it, which uh -huh. we can't, Okay. right? If we was like long, short, right. long, short, we'd be okay. like, okay, that's something. Everybody's 60 40. That's why, if you ran really long, most people are like one leg gets a little more sore than the other, right? One calf's a little more hypertrophy than the other. That's totally normal. What we're also looking for is like that first test or one of the first when we jumped. Mm -hmm. Like, is one side like it's harder to get poppy, and yeah. then the other side's just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Well, that's going to be effect because the poppy side's going to get worked. Right. The left side's just kind of like along for the ride. Right. And that's okay. where we see like injuries kind of like follow that stuff. But yeah. I think, again, if we looked at this, it looks like your hips in a really good position in this frame. Yeah, I like that frame. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. This lean needs to be present, but when you throw this leg back under, your hip stays put. Uh -huh. Right? And okay. that looks like a hip mobility issue. It's right. not. Right, so would you even worry? Because I'm doing like a million hip exercises. And I think right now that could be like neurologic candy for like keeping you here. Like uh -huh. your brain's like, well, I'm strong. Like I, yeah. this is a good, strong okay, position. Okay, all the clams. Yeah. And the and those are all great once you've hit the reset button. Okay. It's no different than if I was like, hey, do bicep curls, and somebody kept doing this. And I'm like, what are you doing? Right. And their elbow does move, but for right. them, this is the best way to do that. Okay. And then once I'm like, hey, this is an elbow flexion movement, right. then they're like, okay, now I can strengthen that. Okay. For you, we want to get your, these two approximated, teach you how to load your pelvic floor, which like, some of it's going to move from dead bugs into like deep squat positions, right? Split squat positions where we challenge that stuff. And a lot of it's isometric cold, okay. right? And then you get into plyometrics and then you get back into this. Okay. Not that you ever take time off running, just like. <laughs> <laughs>